Good morning, everybody. I'm Zach Blanchard, and this is Political Brew. I'm joined by Republican analyst Ray Richardson and Democrat Ken Altschuler. Thanks Good for morning. being with us. Good, Good morning. morning. Good to see you both. We want to start out in Augusta, where the drawn-out legislative session continued this week. A big blow for Democrats. The House just couldn't get enough votes to override Governor Mills' veto on tribal rights legislation. The bill would have given more federal benefits and funding to the Wabanaki tribes. Now, despite having a two-thirds majority in a vote last month to override the veto, a vote in the House this week just didn't make the mark, but both sides admit the issue isn't going away. What I would like to see is a collaboration, talks um, between government and tribes, and not just individual legislators, but um, as a whole, um, to know on the table what the concerns are and to have an amicable agreement as to how they can be addressed or why they're not being addressed at this time. As an indigenous member of an indigenous community in the past Makwadi, Beskar Mukadi, is we never give up. We, we always keep fighting and we always keep stepping forward. So we're, what we're going to do is just we're going to take the losses of, of LD2004. We're going to bring ourselves um, together and work on a plan moving forward. Now, Ken, let's start with you. There were rumblings Governor Mills was working to get the votes to stop this, and obviously she was successful. That's what a governor does with her party. She has some control over it. And I have real mixed feelings about this. I'm a strong advocate for Native American rights. On the other hand, there was a deal struck many years ago, and, and I do get a little tired of people trying to change deals after they make it. I haven't heard them wanting to refund the money that they got paid. That being said, I think her point is that this would lead to a lot of legal issues and problems. She's a good lawyer. I think she knows what she's talking about. There are examples, and Micmac, she pointed out, they had an agreement by collaboration, and it was possible to do with these tribes. So I don't think she's anti what they want. I just think she saw problems on the horizon, Good for her to veto saying, standing by her principles and getting the votes she wanted to take her stand. So I applaud her. Ray, where do we go from here? Well, I hope in the next session with the next governor, which will be, what, about uh, three and a half years from now, we'll have a governor that does, in fact, respect Native Americans. The other tribes in the 49 states in this country get to benefit from federal legislation. Now, to be clear, philosophically, I don't like how we do any of this. But the truth of the matter is, Maine tribes are disadvantaged based on Maine law. I know about the Land Claims Act. I, I met with Tom Terrine two decades ago and learned all about it. But at the bottom line here is Maine tribes are disadvantaged, they're hurting, and this would have been a big help. Governor Mills made a mistake. But Ray, they made a deal. You as a Republican, I must say, I would expect you to say, a deal's a deal, you don't change it 30 years later. So. Oh, it was actually 43. 40, was it? 80 to 40, you're right. Yeah, 1980. About 40 years, you're right. <laughs> a lot has happened, and look, there's been 165 federal laws that our tribes cannot be advantaged by. They're disadvantaged at, compared to the tribes around the country, and I think it's time to move on. I mean, I, I was not here in 1980, but I, as I said, I met with Tom Tureen, learned all about this deal. I think it's time to give our tribes at least some form of sovereignty. Should they pay the money back? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. He's a no, Republican. I'm, I'm no, not, I'm I was going to say, Ken's doing the work for me. Yeah, no, I just, um, I, I just think it's time. I mean, we, we can't expect people to move forward and then put chains around them, and that's what we've done here. All right, working our way down the list. It's being called the most progressive abortion rights legislation in the country, and it is all but law. It allows abortion even after viability, so long as it's deemed medically necessary by a doctor. The Senate voted to enact the bill Thursday, sending it to the governor's desk. Governor Mills is expected to sign it next week. Ray, are you surprised this made it across the finish line? No, no, I'm not. Um, I'm so disappointed. I can't even begin to tell you. I gave my first speech against abortion in 1990. Um, I think this is an affront to God and an affront to uh, the people of Maine. I don't believe the people of Maine support a post-viable abortion. I just don't believe it. I know there was some nebulous poll out there, but if you looked at the details of the poll, the poll didn't tell the truth. There are no boundaries. There are no safeguards. There are nothing here. Even the Press Herald, one of the most liberal papers in the country, said it's the least restrictive abortion law in the country. This is an affront to humanity, and I, I'm just... I can't even begin to express my frustration with these people. Ken? I gave my first speech pro-choice in the 1970s, aging myself a little bit. And I am pro-choice, not pro-abortion, pro-choice. And this is between a woman and her doctor, which is the way it should be. And there have been no late-term abortions. Last year, there were none in the state of Maine. This is a rarity, but there are 
cases where a woman and her physician believes that it's necessary to terminate uh, the, the child, which I consider to be a living thing. I'm not disputing that or doubting that, but it's a choice between the woman and the doctor. It's not the place for the government to interfere. As the Republicans said during the masking during COVID, the government can tell you not, you know, to wear a mask, but they can't tell you about abortion. You can't be, have it both ways, Ray. So, well, I'm not having it both ways. If a child's viable outside of the womb, it's a human being. It deserves the opportunity to live and live out its dreams. And Governor Mills, and but in this case, it's up to the doctor. That's exactly right. Well, and her, let's and face patient. it. I mean, everybody keeps saying, "Don't you trust doctors, Ray?" Well, during COVID, there were a lot of doctors who spoke out against what the government was saying. They were silenced. Some of their licenses were suspended. Some were revoked. All you have to do is look at the state website. I think that there are doctors who think abortion at any point is okay. So you doctor shop, just like people drug shop. We all know you can drug shop if you want opiates with a doctor. So no, I don't trust any of this. If a child's viable outside of the womb, that child should be allowed to live. I don't support abortion in any regard, but this is an affront to humanity. We kill innocent lives sending drones into Syria. We execute people under the death penalty. We choose over life and death. And a doctor and a woman has a right to decide what to do in her own body. I have never advocated for war, and I do not support the death penalty because I believe that all creations are precious and unique. I in like God's your eyes. consistency. I support the death penalty. So there you go. Well, there All you go. Right. And finally, Governor Mills faced a pretty wild legislative session. An op-ed published in the Bangor Daily News did not hold back, taping aim at the governor. We're going to pull up that op-ed here now, saying, quote, Janet Mills keeps breaking her campaign promises. It goes after Mills for promising to work with Republicans and Democrats, then pushing through a majority budget, even criticizing her on the abortion issue because during the campaign she said she had no plans to change current law. But, Ray, is this criticism of the governor fair? Oh, I think it's completely fair. Governor Mills has said she won't raise taxes. She put in the Family and Medical Paid Leave Act. It'll be the largest tax increase in decades on Maine people. We all know what's happening with our electricity bills because of the tax that is the solar subsidies and, of course, this abortion bill. She said on this station and two others she would not change the abortion law, and then within two weeks of getting sworn in, she did. There is no politician in America that doesn't lie for a living. Well, it doesn't lie to get elected. And lying is such a harsh word. Right. Let's call it puffing. No, 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 let's tell the truth. It's lying. If you say you'll do one thing and then choose to do another, that's a lie. And that's my ex-partner, Matt Gagnon on WGA. Yes. A and staunch I... conservative makes him look a little liberal. So <laughs> I take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> with that, we're going to take a quick break. The Weekend Morning Report is back right after this. Good morning, everybody. I'm Zach Blanchard, joined once again by Republican analyst Ray Richardson and Democrat Ken Altschuler. Thanks for staying with us. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Let's start with that bizarre discovery at the White House this week. Cocaine found not far from the West Wing. It was found while the president and his family were away at Camp David, and Republicans are pouncing on this, even trying to connect to the scandal surrounding Hunter Biden. Here's what Ron DeSantis had to say about it all. Well, I've long believed, I think a lot of us have believed that the Biden administration has been blowing it on a lot of fronts, but I guess it's a little bit more literal than even I had thought. All right, Ken, this obviously this is the kind of distraction the Biden administration does not want. Is this just political nonsense at this point? Of course. I mean, I remember uh, Willie Nelson smoking pot with uh, Jimmy Carter's son on the roof of the White House, and I'm not saying that's a good idea, but... Does anybody believe that Joe Biden had anything to do with cocaine in the entrance of the West Wing? Seriously. So make political fodder out of it. I am sure that there's drugs brought into the White House all the time, sometimes employees, sometimes passerbyers and visitors. So make do whatever you want with this, but this is a non-starter, absolutely a non-starter. Right. So I will agree that the Biden administration is blowing it, but not for the reasons Ron DeSantis <laughs> said. I think they know who put the drugs there. I mean, we now know How? that this was close to yeah. the Situation Room. Every inch of the White House is under camera. I bet the Secret Service knows. If they would just come out and say, look, this is a personnel issue, we've dismissed the person, we've turned the evidence over to the local authorities, this would be done. But the answer but is they, there's but, tons of people going through that, by that, that room. Not by the Situation Room. They now said where it actually was. Oh, it no, wasn't a lot the, of people go it's through not that the, Not in the tourist area. Well, I don't this think so. Staff. I think they're saying it's the tourist area and a lot of people well, won't pass that. Uh, the stuff there's, came out this morning. There's been some updated stuff yeah. saying that it may have been more. Um, so, but regardless, so I mean, just, but to say it's Hunter Biden goes well, yeah, uh, no, to, no, no, to no. another I, level. I, I mean, that's a fun joke, obviously, because we know he does coke. But I, Hunter Biden doesn't work. He wouldn't go anywhere near work was being done. So he's not his coke. But you look, really they could. He's not going to say. 
I, they're not going to uh, say who I did don't it? Know. I mean, look, they got cameras everywhere. I mean, really, 24 7 surveillance of every square inch. So they should have just said, we know who it is. We've dismissed them. We've turned it over to the authorities and moved on. So you think yesterday, the lying? Yesterday. When yeah, they well, say they don't know and they may never know. I, I mean, look, I don't trust the FBI upper echelon leadership anymore. But yesterday, the Biden administration invoked the Hatch Act not to talk about this. This is just bizarre. It's, this is a personnel issue. Deal with it and move on. But nobody does this anymore. All right. Speaking about Hunter Biden, GOP presidential candidate Nikki Haley says Republicans should absolutely start the impeachment process against the president. This is over allegations the administration meddled with the investigation into Hunter Biden over misdemeanor tax related crimes. Ray, it is often Biden's predecessor, former President Donald Trump, that uses the term witch hunt. Could President Biden use the same terms here? Well, I don't know. You know, the U.S. attorney in Delaware Weiss has said uh, publicly, at least to people in the uh, circle and in New York Times verified, that he felt hampered in his investigation. But I don't agree with impeachment until we actually know all the facts. Impeachment, according to the Constitution, is supposed to be an extraordinary thing. If you read the Federalists, they didn't want to see somebody impeached every time they made a move you didn't like. No one can govern that way. We have turned impeachment into an ordinary exercise. We, we had one from 1789 to when Bill Clinton was impeached. What was that, 98? And now we've had three, and if this one goes through, the fourth, more importantly, there are not enough senators in the Senate to convict him. We're wasting time when Americans are struggling. And Ken, how does this benefit Nikki Haley? Is she trying to attract the Trump base or something? Of course, she wants to be on the right. Well, the Senate is more trying to be on the right than Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley wants his base to like her if they abandon Donald Trump. So you've got to say what's popular. But, you know, the, the first impeachment action of Donald Trump, I thought was a mistake. I don't think they had any grounds for it. I think right. the second was a more solid impeachment, but it was too late because it was his second presidency. I think Bill Clinton's impeachment was absolutely appropriate. He lied under oath. Frankly, I think he should have resigned from office as much of a good president he was. But yes, it's ridiculous how we're abusing this process. It's all for political appearances. Right. That's not what it was designed to be. I agree with her answer. Some agreement. All right. Meantime, candidate for president and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is facing some blowback over a campaign video he shared to go after Donald Trump for supporting the LGBTQ plus community and touting his own anti LGBTQ policies. Advocates and even some Republicans saying it those policy decisions are dangerous and politically stupid. Ken, do you agree? Absolutely. I mean, at first, it's homophobic. Second, it is trying to cater to the extreme right. You're criticizing Donald Trump because he's pro LGBTQ rights that that's how you think you're going to get votes away from Donald Trump his base is going to abandon him now because of this it's it's incredible that he is trying to distinguish himself by going more on the right than Donald Trump that's not the way to win the nomination from Donald Trump and and so yes it's homophobic it is a bizarre ad I think he should fire all of his advisors and start over again although I don't think he's ever going to get the nomination right well, first of all, it appears Donald Trump supporters are not going to abandon him for any reason. So to do stuff like this is nuts. That's number one. Number two, why can't we just have candidates tell us what they're going to do and stop telling us about the other guy? Because the truth is, if you're running for office and you win, what the other guy was going to do doesn't matter. I don't know when it became the, the, the cachet thing to do to attack people over everything. I want to know what you're going to do. If you're running, Zach, I want to know what you're going to do. I don't care what your opponent, Ken's going to do. That's what I need you to tell me. And we just don't do that here anymore. It's just nuts. I wish it would stop, and it is harming our country. All right. Finally, winners, losers. Ray, we'll start with you. Well, oddly enough, I'm going to have some losers this week, but I'll start out with the winners. The winners are the people of Cumberland County for the wonderful work done by Cumberland County she uh, Sheriff Kevin Joyce's office and the entire Cumberland County Sheriff's office in coordination with other law enforcement. We had that terrible shooting situation out at uh, Naples, and they arrested the young man 45 miles away. Uh, just so much credit to those guys. My losers are two. My first loser are the innocent, unborn, viable children of Maine. That's my first loser. The second is this legislature who they should all resign in shame for what they've done to hurt Maine from the solar subsidies to this big tax to allowing innocent, unborn, viable children to be have their life taken. They're a disgrace and I wish they would resign. Okay. Wow. 
the winner of the week is Mark Zuckerberg for uh, starting threads <laughs> and giving it to Elon Musk, who is my loser of the week for spending billions of dollars on a worthless thing he purchased. I hope he loses <laughs> all of his money. Good going. And I don't like Mark Zuckerberg, so congratulations to him. Did you sign up for threads? Uh, I haven't yet because too many people are signing up. So I'm going to wait till it calms down a little bit. And, wow. then and I've canceled my Twitter account long ago. Oh. All right. Did you have a loser? Was your loser yes, Musk? Yes, uh, Elon Musk is okay. my loser. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we want to give you a heads up that this is the last political brew of the season. We'll take a break for the summer and be back in a couple of months with some new voices and new discussions about the major issues facing our state and country. The Morning Report's back right after this.